What is a dead body? Tell us about visual storytelling. That's a great question, and we're going to answer that today on Two Real Guys. Hi, I'm Larry Jordan. And I'm Norman Holland. And welcome to the Two Real Guys. Norman, you know, there's a lot of podcasts that are out there that talk about producing films and video from the technology and the gear and the equipment. It drives me absolutely insane, Larry. Absolutely insane. Why? Well, everybody thinks it's all about the technology. It's the technology. all about the technology. It's no, all the gear. It's no, all no, no, it cannot be because what about the stories we want to tell? The what? Stories. <laughs> <laughs> this is really what, what people are forgetting. We all know how to push the buttons. We know how to push the buttons. We don't really know why you would push the button. Norman's got a lot of, of experience in doing feature film production. Norman, what kind of films have you worked on? Well, I've uh, worked as a picture editor and a music editor on films like Heather's, Sophie's Choice, The Cotton Club, and now I'm head of the editing department at USC's film school. And my background is in documentaries and live video, multi-camera work, and lots and lots of corporate work. And between Norman's background in feature films and my background in video and corporate, we thought we would distill all this down into a series of podcasts that focus not on the equipment, not on the technology, but on the creative side of visual storytelling. Right, because really it's why you would push the buttons, not how you push the buttons. That's important in terms of manipulating the audience. Just to give me an example, as Norman and I were putting this podcast podcast together, we thought that we would give you an illustration of how story can actually control the technology that you use. Norman, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Well, this is something that I use in my classes a lot at USC. And uh, what I do is I set up a scene. And this is going to be uh, someone who walks into an empty room, crosses a, uh, partway through the room, looks down and sees a dead body in the middle of the floor. Right? And that's a the scene. Dead body? Yes, pretty scary, right? <sighs> But because we're student filmmakers, we're low budget filmmakers, we can't afford to do 500 different angles and shoot for four days on this one tiny little scene. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shoot it with two angles only. Two angles. Count them, two. Okay. The first one will be a medium shot. He'll walk in, cross in the middle of the room, look out of frame and see the dead body and then react. All right, so that's one angle. Okay, what's the second angle? Second angle is uh, let's do his point of view of what exactly he sees, all right? So that what we're gonna wanna do is bring this amazing actor in, have the actor walk in, look at a frame, and gasp. Uh, you want to do that, go up to the stage? That's, yeah, we've got a stage, we've got some actors. Let's, uh, let's put this together. Okay. Let's bring that amazing actor in, okay? So, he walks in wait, and starts- Wait, wait. Well, Wait a why, minute, why, 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 I why? thought you said it was an amazing actor. Well, incredible actor, who'd you expect? Brad Pitt? I wasn't expecting that. Oh. All right, we've, listen, we've got the two real players here. We've got real live actors that we can put on a real live stage. Okay, Let's right. get him off and let's get Danielle on. Sorry, Norman. Okay, so <laughs> let's bring in Danielle then. Okay. Right? So that Danielle is going to walk in, right? See, this is that first angle. She's walking in, she gets halfway across the room, looks down, sees a body, gasps. <gasps> what a reaction. You're right, she's better than I was. At every possible level. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's one angle that okay. we're shooting. So, because we're low budget, here's the second one. Okay. Her point of view of the dead body. Great, it's, great dead body, it's a right? dead body. No. Okay, so how are we gonna cut this? All right, well let's cut it in three different ways because how we put it together is going to affect how we feel as an audience, all right? So here's the first version of the scene. Uh, Danielle walks in, she crosses partway across the room and looks down, gasps, and now we cut to her point of view. There's a dead body. And she sees the dead body before we do. Okay, that's version one. Right, and we're gonna have a certain reaction to it because of the, the uh, way in which that's cut We together. see her reaction and then we see the body. And then we feel it ourselves. All right, so okay, here's the second version. Okay. All right, she walks in. Yeah. Walks halfway across, but before she looks down, we cut to the dead body and then back up to her for the gas. It's <gasps> almost like we're reacting with her. That's right. Very different feel we'll totally have. Totally different. Because we're reacting same time she is. Third version, let's do a third one, okay? I promise okay. this will be the last one. All right. Before we even cut to Danielle, 
We cut to the dead body. Ooh, set up the scene ahead of time. Right, and then Danielle walks in. Now, every single step that she takes crossing the room is gonna be informed by the fact that we know something that she doesn't. So what's the best way to cut this? Hmm, well, I think that it depends on something amazing called story. <laughs> which is why, depending upon the story, that's what's going to determine the way you want the audience to react, which determines the order in which you're going to cut stuff. Mm -hmm. The way in which we cut this together is determined by the story, not by the software that's doing the editing. Well, it seems to me there's almost like a rule you could put together that helps you to mm. decide how you want to organize these shots. Yeah, and in the, the world of two real guys, let's call this the rule of threes. The rule of threes. Mm, okay, yeah, and what's and the definition? Well, um, the rule of threes means that what comes before and after a shot is completely influenced by the shot that we're looking at. In other words, story drives everything. Mm -hmm. And But how do you figure out what your story is? Hmm. Well, uh, let's, let's invent another term here on Two Real Guys, uh, because I think it's all about creating a log line. Oh, great. A piece of wood, which is out there, and I grab the piece of wood, tie a string to it, and I exactly tie... Exactly wrong. Exactly wrong. What a log line is, is a two, three, maybe four sentence description of what the core of your movie is really about. It's going to tell you how things change for your major character during the show. Can you give me an example of a log line? Sure. Let's take um, a movie that you might know called Citizen Kane. I have seen that. That's right. It was kind of made around the time. Well, Be careful where yeah, you're going with that. I'll back off for this. <laughs> well, the log line um, uh, for, for Citizen Kane, you could say it's about a newspaper publisher at the turn of the century of the United States who uh, eventually gets very, very powerful and loses all of his friends. Right? You could say that because that's what Citizen Kane's about, right? But that's not a very interesting description and not particularly helpful for those of us in, uh, filmmakers. So a much better version of this is you could say Citizen Kane is a movie about Charles Foster Kane, who is a passionate, driven newspaper publisher at the turn of the century in the U.S., who wants desperately to be the best and the biggest publisher around. And as he moves towards that goal, which you would admit is a pretty good goal, right? Mm -hmm. To be best in class. Um, as he moves towards that goal, he discovers that he may have to give up a few things, including his friends. And finally, by the end, he's made the choice to give up his friends, to embrace the richness of being the biggest publisher, and therefore he dies alone. Right? So that's very different. And what are the differences then? Well, the difference is one is, is the first one just describes it. Mm -hmm. The second one shows me what changes over the course of the show. And I suspect that where you're going is change. Mm -hmm. Right, because if you understand how your lead character, right, first you need to understand who is your lead character, Charles Foster Kane, then if you understand how he has changed over the course of the movie, you now get a touch point for every scene in the film, how it's going to push your understanding and how the audience is going to feel about it forward, right? Because one of the things that we really want to do in every single project we do is manipulate the audience in a good way, I'm not afraid of that term, we manipulate the audience to feel what we want them to feel. And that's the story. There's a lot to talk about on the creative side of putting visual stories together. We'll be back with a tip right after this. Everyone wants to run right out and start shooting. But if you want a great project that people are really going to want to watch, take some time before you shoot and write out your log line. And then ask yourself how each scene that you're shooting is going to affect your storyline. We'll have a tip for you on every episode of The Two Real Guys because the creative process is what this entire series is all about. Right, how storytelling informs everything in filmmaking. What we shoot, how we perform, how we edit. Story is all. My name is Larry Jordan. His name is Norman Holland. And thanks for watching The Two Real Guys.